beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm out in my boat, I'm out in Molly Moo. Um, and what's going on? I'm a bit excited about today. Well, I'm always excited, you know, I'm easily excited. Um, what am I doing? Right, so I am fishing Western Solent. I'm anchored in a bay just off the Isle of Wight and I'm hunting Stingray. I've never ever caught a stingray before. I've heard reports, I've seen the pictures, I know the marks, I know there are areas to catch them. Um, so yeah, I'm chasing stingray. So what have I got for that? So I'm running, I'm only fishing with two rods today. They've got my, <laughs> one of my tips just went. Um, they've got my sole attention. I've just got two rods off the back. I'm using the Shakespeare Ugly Stick Elites. I've got Slosh 30s with 40 pound braid and a running ledger. And the running ledger how-to will appear at the top of the screen as if by magic. Very simple rig. I'm using a fairly long hook snood, three and a half feet, which for me, for shallow water, shallow, six and a half feet. It's only just over six feet, but it is a massive tide today. A huge tide, one of the biggest springs of the year. So this would almost double in depth, I'm thinking, 10, 12 feet, something like that. So not a huge tide range, but the pull on the boat is going to be quite strong. So this is why I've deliberately come into a bay out of the main flow of the Solent. Um, weed everywhere. There's loads of weed everywhere. There's big rafts of it, as you'd expect from a big spring tide. And what bait am I using? So I managed to feather up some mackerel. I've got a few. I've got some frozen mackerel. I'll use the fresh first. The frozen could always be chummed down for bream bream ground bait and stuff like that so i use the fresh mackerel but both rods at the moment have got big masses of ragworm on so i'm using a bait needle and i'll do a baiting up later on so you can see but i'm using a bait needle and as if by magic there'll be a how to make bait needles link come up um, and i'm loading that ragworm six eight ten ragworm elasticating it all up and then putting the hook in. And I'm not gonna strip any bait off of these rigs today. I'm just gonna to add to them. So if it comes in, it's a bit mauled up, I'll put it in the bait needle, add some more ragworm and bind it all up and just keep putting out large sausage baits of ragworm. I might get a clean hook rig later and put fresh mackerel fillet and put fresh mackerel fillets on. Um, and that is what the plan is for today. As always, Solent, inundated with hounds at the moment daytime tide run i'm not really expecting doggies but they may appear um i had some comments on the channel i haven't been doing doggy in the boat enough well i'm avoiding the doggies if, I, if i'm completely honest <laughs> i want to avoid them altogether um so yeah any kind of ray but in particular i would love a stingray today my only concern is, will it fit in my net? That is a concern for today. So I've got a decent sized net. Is it gonna be big enough for one of these big dustbin lids? They're very deep. And of course they got the stinger. So I've got a plan for dealing with the stinger without harming the fish. I'm gonna wrap it in a rag. Two rags, if I'm honest. I wanna be belt and braces. Um, two rags round the tail. Um, but I've got to catch one first. I've got to catch one, land one, get it in the boat. Because I'd, I'd like to take a good close look at Stingray. I really would. I think they're amazing creatures, but safely. Um, sun's right in my face, but not in the camera, which is good for filming. Um, it's calm, no winds. It's stunning. Like I say, Jamie is, is anchored. Jamie's moored 500 yards in front of me. Uh, so that's it, we're set for the day. I think it's going to be a quiet day with chaos. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's going to be quiet for the majority of the day, interspersed with absolute chaos. I'm just going to chillax today. I'm going to sit back, feet on the guardrail, 
kick back and enjoy myself. It's a day out on the boat. It's taken a while for anything to happen and I've even had to move spots. I've gone to deep water now. I've come away from the shallow. I've got no idea what this is, but I'm using big weights. So it could be anything from a bream to a doggy. <laughs> it might be a doggy. It might be a ray. I don't know. It's certainly not giving up much of a fight. <laughs> But it's got a bit of weight, but the only reason why it's got the weight is because it's got the tide, the current with it. <laughs> I'm interested to see what it is. Oh, a lot of weed. And I picked up my other line, and there's something there. Is that that way? No. What does it want to do? It's picked up the line, but it doesn't want to play. There we go, the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the dance. And what have we got? Oh look. It's a doggy. Get rid of some of this weed. It's hard fishing today. Doggy in the boat. Let's get a tea bar. I only do that because people like it. <laughs> oh dear, and a doggy. Well, off you go, sunshine. Toodly pip. And away he goes. Oh, something else. That doesn't look, uh, that doesn't look like a doggy. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, this one's got a bit of weight to it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know what this is. It's staying deep, jagging around. This might be an eel. This might be an eel. Yeah, it wants to go. Cool. It has got some go in it. Well, it was worth having the doggy to have the camera rolling to see the take. He did us a bit of a favor. Oh, it's coming up a bit easy. This might be an eel. Yeah, jagging around. I've got a funny feeling this might be a, a strap. He's not coming easy though. Gotta be careful because I've got a I've got a lazy rod out there with mac with mackerel feathers on in case there's a passing shoal. I think starting to think that might be a bit of a mistake. Call this oh yeah he's coming. Yeah, it's sort of comes towards me, stops and pulls. I think it's an eel. Like there, it's just coming towards me. Mind you, it's got quite a, quite a dogged fight. Should see something can soon. We're only in 65 feet, feet, I think, 65, 70 foot. All right, so we've got a piece of weed on the trace. What have we got? Oh no, it's a ray. Yeah, it's a nice ray. Oh, he's going, he's going, he's going, he's going, he's trying to go. I was hoping for a ray today. Or something different to the to the to the amount of smooth hounds we've had recently. 
Yeah, he's a thornback ray. Nice thornback ray. And it's a male. Male thornback ray. On mackerel, as you would expect. Nice. That makes a change. Nice to mix things up. Get rid of this weed. He's not going to break any records, but he's very welcome. Let's get a T-bar on him. T-bar. And there we have it. <laughs> Lovely little thornback ray. Look at that. He is absolutely stunning. I love their eyes on these critters. They are amazing. Look at him. He's absolutely perfection. He's even got a spike right on his nose. See if I can get that into the camera. Right on his nose, look. That spike there. All down his cheeks. Look at the colourings on that. Let's see if we can get you a look at his eye. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can get you a nice release where you get to see him swim away. Oh, he just turned and went straight, straight away. <laughs> Straight down. I fished for a couple of hours in, in shallower water. I was on for the blank. <laughs> it was getting that grim. There was literally nothing. Um, fresh mackerel fillet that I feathered up myself this morning. Just pulled in a nice thornback ray. I don't know, four pound, five pound. You know I'm rubbish at guessing. And a doggy on the other. So I'm gonna get baited and weighted and shot back out because there's fish here. See what else we can catch, eh? See if we can get something different. After fishing for a couple of hours and having absolutely nothing to the point where there was a chance of going home on a blank, I thought I'd move to deeper water. I've only come offshore from that mark by three, four hundred yards, but I'm in 65 feet of water. Within 15 minutes of putting two rods down, I've had a doggy and a thornback. Small thornback. I'm no expert, you know I'm rubbish at guessing. Four, four and a half, five pounds. Someone will correct me if you think I'm wrong. Um, help me out if you can judge by what you've seen on the film. Tell me, because I didn't want to weigh that one. They're full of spines and it gets all tangled up in the net. In the, in the sling, for the weighing sling. Wind's picked up. There's still boats around me fishing. There's some very small boats actually. Very small open boats, a lot smaller than me. Um, dory type open boats. I'm going to get some baits back down. So I'm going to put cuttlefish, a big chunk, and I'm going to put mackerel, a big fillet. See what happens, eh? Bought all that ragworm, and I don't think I'm going to need it. <laughs> I'm going to put squid on, uh, cuttlefish on one, mackerel on the other. See what happens. Some power boats hooning around. I think I've just seen a bite on this rod. <sighs> Oh yeah, there's something on it. <laughs> Try and give you a better view than just my back. <laughs> I'm not sure, I think this was cuttlefish on this one. I hope those power boats realise there's a dirty great big rock sticks out of the water over there. <laughs> if you hear a crunch in a minute, you know what it is. What have we got? Oh, it's a doggy. <laughs> Where this doggy says rays, and rays make happy days. Let's put this around this side. Got to be a little bit careful today because the, the boat's moving right. Oh, he's let go of it. <laughs> oh, it's mackerel. That was the mackerel bait, that one. I sometimes talk about putting a mess of worms on a hook, so I thought I'd show it. And this is something I'm doing today on the boat just to mix things up a little bit. I've got plenty of ragworm, so I've got to use it up. It isn't going to keep, so I might as well make the best that I can out of it. And all I've got is a three and a half, four foot hook snood, a baiting needle, and some elastic. Put elastic in my pocket. I've got the worm on the deck, so I'll just bring, in fact, if I put that on the table, that's better, isn't it? That's better, Mark. I'm more organized now. So 
I'm just going to set that hook to one side so I don't jag myself. I'm just going to clip it over there. Right. Take a feisty but reasonable size worm and through the mouth parts feed the entire worm or as long as you want your bait. So that's that's quite a good point actually. So as long as you want this bait, you may not want it 10 inches, the length of a huge great ragworm. You may only want it six inches, something like that. Take the next ragworm and just through the head part, nothing else, and let him hang free and stack them up. Different sizes, different thicknesses. If you put them on just purely by their head, head hooked, Now I've only got one on the length of the needle and three hanging down. I'll put one more on. And then I'm going to be great. I've got to use these worm up to be honest, so I might as well put them on. Okay. So I've now got one along the needle and all four hanging down. My hands are white. And this is when you need your elastic. So if you hold the needle vertical get your elastic and start from the top and work your way down and keep all of the mess of worms at the bottom of the bait work your way down to the end tilt it the other way and then work your way back up again you can hold things in local sort of location with your thumb And I'm not pulling this tight. It's nowhere near tight. Because if you pull it tight, you'll just pull it through the worm and they'll lose all their shape. And you can see by how close this is to my face, I'm not getting a face full of worm until you end up with a sausage like that. Take your hook, put it in the baiting needle, hold it at the, at the, at the end, so that's now located. And then just the amount of elastic you need to elastic the hook on the surface of that sausage but to hold it in place and there's got to be a little bit at the end where the top of the line is because I'm not using a panel on this this is just going to be running ledger lowered down over the side of the boat and break off the elastic and that's what you end up with you end up with a sausage of ragworm that every time that bait comes in now you put it back into the baiting needle he says getting all upside down tangled back to front come on mark switch on put it back in the baiting needle and just add to it don't take anything off just add to it and keep adding and keep adding that's how you end up with a mess of ragworm. That's how I do it. Feel free to try it. Tell me what you think. Put it in the comments. Do you do it differently? Do you do it the same? Look at that. That is, for a ragworm bait, outstanding. Now some people will now just tip the hook off with a couple of stragglers. So if you've got some small ragworm that are too small to go on as we've just shown, Enticers, I think, is probably the best way to call them. Look at that, with a few enticers on the end. That's a stunning bait. That is an absolute killer bait. But let's see if we can catch something with it. <laughs> it's all right saying it. I've got to prove it now, haven't I? What am I going to catch? I don't know. I know what I'd like to catch. It doesn't look like it's going to happen today. I want to catch a stingray. I really want to catch a stingray. I want to see one. Right, let's just get this on, baited out, weighted and chucked, and see what we can catch on that. It is hard work today, hard work. I've been beavering around, freshening my baits. I've got a, a little, like, small hook rig with some cuttlefish strips on it. I've got uh, 
really fresh, caught this morning, feathered this morning, mackerel on one rig, and I've got the mess of ragworm that I've just shown how I, how I baited it up, and that's gone out. So I'm really pleased I caught a ray today because recently it's all been about smooth hounds, smooth hounds, smooth hounds, smooth hounds. They're absolutely dominating the Solent at the moment. And it was nice to catch something different. It's nice that, you know, I love the ray. I absolutely love the ray. And I don't catch that many thornback rays for some reason. Um, blondes, undulates, and particularly I seem to find the spotted rays for whatever reason. I seem to find spotted rays most places I go. Um, but thornbacks, and a really good thornback, seem to elude me for some reason. So it's nice to have caught that one today, albeit he was a medium to average size. The little picky up rod, I'm surprised that hasn't had anything. Um, even if I had a dogfish on it, it would be interesting on that little lure rod. And I'm getting a jangle on, that's mackerel. So I'm pretty confident that's going to be a doggy. And it's quite an aggressive take actually, just looking at the jangle on the rod tip. So this rod's had a bit of a jangle. Clickers off, Mark. I'll have you know. Oh, come off. Mm, I think I might miss this. But that rod's going as well. <laughs> that one's got the ragworm on it. So I bet it's something small picking the tails off of that big sausage bait. Mm. And it's probably just had a nibble on this. Oh no, clean hook. So whatever took this, took the lot. He wasn't mucking about, was he? Oh, and there's a good bite on that one. That looks like a doggy bite though, to be honest. Let's just unclip this to make this safe while I deal with that rod. So things are starting to liven up. I think they're livening up because the tide's just started to turn. So this is the ragworm bait. I don't know if we've got anything on it. Oh, yeah, feels like we've got something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're in. Fish on. <laughs> oh, I think it's just let go. Is it? Yeah, I think it's just let go. That'd be a doggy. Ah, I bet he's taking all the back end of that bait off as well. Cheeky little monkey. Let's have a look. Yeah, look at that, made a right mess of it. All that effort for all that bait, and they've just annihilated it. <laughs> look at the state of that. <laughs> Take this elastic off, put it in my little bag. It's getting a bit choppy now. I've seen a bite on this one. Thought it'd be worth checking the bait anyway. See if I've had my bait robbed. <laughs> yeah, clean hook. <laughs> clean hook, bait thieves. Bait robbers. This is the mackerel head rod. And I don't know if it's just going to be a doggy or something, but it's nothing impressive. There's no fight in it. It's not pulling back. What have we got? We got a doggy on a mackerel head. <laughs> just check that it is a doggy and not a little huss. Yeah, he's a doggy. Oh, there's a bite on that other rod. Yeah, it's all starting to liven up. Tide's starting to move. I'm going to put this mackerel head back out, I think. That's what you went for. And I've got a bite on the other rod. Let's get this one back in. That one will only be a doggy with that kind of bite, I think. 
I don't think it'd be anything outrageous. We'll soon find out. Doggy action. <laughs> Down the field. Said the uh, bishop to the actress. Oh, yeah, something get. Something with a bit of go in it. Ah, it's going to be interesting. That's a different feel. But the tide is absolutely ripping through at the moment. Oh, that's a nice boat in the background. Nice catamaran. Fishing boat. Yeah. Whatever this is, is making a lot of use of the tide. I don't think it's particularly big, but it might be interesting. If there's another ray, I'll be chuffed to conkers. What have we got? Nah, it's just a bigger doggy. <laughs> it's still a doggy, it's just a bigger doggy. That's just a big doggy. Let's put that weight there for a minute. And get this critter t barred off. And he's gone. The fishing's just not picking up how I expected it to. So I'm going to cut my losses. I'm going to pack up. Still got one rod out. It's just dragging along. You can see it's dragging along the gravelly bottom. Um, no bites or anything. I brought one rod in. Boat's an absolute tip. But if I make a sprint back for, for home, for want of a better word, I can get it in on this tide. So I can't see it getting any better. Because of that, I'm going to go and have a beer. <laughs> I deserve a beer. It's been hard work today, hard fishing, but the ray made it all worthwhile. Didn't get my stinger, haven't seen any bass. Didn't get my stinger, haven't seen any bass. Caught a couple of mackerel, netted a um, cuttlefish. That's gonna get vac packed and saved for the winter for cod bait. Um, yeah, really hit and miss at the moment. The fish didn't like this big tide today, this big spring tide, they just didn't like it. It'd be interesting to hear the catch reports from elsewhere to see if anywhere else fished well for this, but it certainly didn't fish well here, Western Solent. That's about it for now. So tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to spend some time again sometime soon. From me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.